you know, I'm obviously quite naive to the whole porn industry or sex working industry. And so I kind of wanted to kind of dive in with you a little bit as well, even after hearing that those first couple experiences that you had, it kind of, you know, how are you presented with each adult film? And like, how much control do you have to say like what you can or what you won't do before you sign on to the job? Who sort of gives you that, you know, schedule per se? So most girls getting into the industry at the time when I was in the industry, they had agents. It was just the thing that everyone did. And so the first agent that I had, he was very like, okay, you're going to do this. You're going to do this. You have shoots for these people. The industry is very, in a way, you know, the girls are disposable, which you're told that when you come into the industry, like you're disposable, our relationship yeah, they tell you that. And they say our relationship with the producers is more important. So the agent's goal is to get you to do as much as you can for as cheap as you can. I mean, I'm, I'm also, very upset right now. And also to be you know, very, very pliable. So yes, you can say, oh, I don't want to do this. Or, you know, you can give demands like that but you're then told that you're being bad. You're um, not going to be booked anymore because you're a diva. Say like you say, no, I don't want to come on my face. Could you please do it somewhere else? Then you would get reprimanded and told that you probably wouldn't be booked again because that's what they want. Were so you living in a house with other girls at the time or were you living on your own with your husband? Um, No. So me and my husband had broken up at this point, gone on a separation. And my first agent flew me to him and had me stay in his apartment in the room across from his. And I shared a bed with another girl. And then after that, I think I stayed there for a few months. And then he actually wouldn't let me move far away from him. He said, you have to stay in Woodland Hills, which is the area where most of the porn is shot and had me get an apartment in the same building as him so he could watch what I was doing and he also did not want me to have boyfriends date or do anything that wasn't work related so it was very it was very much controlled yeah and I think at that age as well when you're wanting to sort of climb the ranks because you still have this idea of you know if I get to a specific place I'm gonna get into you know the girls next door I'm gonna get into that sort of arena of things you probably fearful I'm assuming you know to speak up for yourself in an aspect I mean I know like I said I'm very naive to all this so excuse me if I say the wrong thing but (laughs) I I just want to say you know I think many people when they think of sex workers they sometimes think that they can be groomed or they can have a pimp. And I want to know, do you, have you experienced that? Do you know friends that have experienced that? In the porn industry? So I will say it's a known thing that some agents are more pimp-like than others. So I had two agents during my time in porn. The first one was what I just described. And he is known as one of the best agents in that industry, but it did not work for me. It took me a long time to stand up for myself and say like, hey, I don't, I can't work with you. You're yelling and screaming at me. I want my freedom to live my life and date and be, you know, a normal human who doesn't just wake up every single day and go and shoot porn. So I actually quit. I left that agent and then I came back, I think four months later and I signed with a new agent, which was a much better fit for me and a more positive experience to work with. Um, so I think it really depends on, on who you get aligned with, because my first experience with an agent was very bad. The second was all right, much better, but there are lots of bad agents out there, which I think is Pluto. (laughs) It's one of the major issues with the industry as well is just these 40 year old men who have been in the industry for 20, 30 years, maybe longer. And they are very, very good at getting the girls to do exactly what they want through, I think, grooming, 
because the second I got off the plane, it was, this is what the good sluts do. This is how you're going to be successful. The good girls do this. They don't complain. They do anal for $400. And that's the type of stuff that I was being told almost immediately. And so you you feel like you have to do it because they're speaking so positively of these other girls that are doing things that aren't necessarily good for them. 